But it's now less than two weeks from the New South Wales election and it's still lion ball between Labor and Liberal. If the Liberal coalition actually hold all the seats they've got, well, there's still an outside chance of forming minority government. And so I guess that Labor looks more likely at this stage, but there are some reservations, at least in my mind, about whether they deserve to form government. I still don't know what their appeal is, other than they aren't the current government. That the Libs have been largely dysfunctional is beyond question. A revolving door of premiers, all mired in scandal, not knowing whether they're Arthur or Martha in a policy sense. They're wrestling between, say, being pale green or lavender blue. Well, one New South Wales politician who knows exactly where his colours are nailed is One Nation leader Mark Latham. I caught up with him a short time ago. Mark Latham, thanks so much for your time. When it comes to the two major parties this election, it seems like there's a choice between bad and possibly worse. What is One Nation's pitch to New South Wales voters? Well, Corey, we've been focused on the issues that the major parties don't address in their uh, stage managed, very lack lacklustre campaign. Uh, we've addressed the big issue of energy security. We want to halt the so-called transition to a clean energy economy because uh, the Matt Keane plan, we now have official forecasts of blackouts and Keane's electricity tax and paying for renewable subsidies, paying for transmission wires, rewiring the state out in the Western districts of New South Wales, consumers have to pay for that. And uh, both Labor and, and Liberal have got all their eggs in the renewables basket. We want flourishing coal, gas, nuclear and the renewables that currently exist to increase supply, take off the electricity tax and bring down electricity and gas bills. So um, it's very important um, to change direction because the keen Labor green energy policy is failing. And the other thing we want to do is address the fact that New South Wales has had the fastest falling school academic results in the world. And we've got to get back to the evidence base in the classroom. We want to bring back school inspectors who'll certify that the evidence is being followed for direct instruction, phonics illiteracy, behavioural standards, testing, data, um, uh, data usage, and, and also that the curriculum is being followed, that we've actually got education instead of political indoctrination. Yeah, well, you have been like a dog with a bone on that education system. And I know that parents right across New South Wales and across Australia are cheering you on. Realistically, though, what are your expectations for the performance of One Nation at this election? And if you have the balance of power, who would you back into government? Well, uh, you've got uh, Matt Keane there, um, basically from the, the, the green left of politics, as woke as... Uh, Corey, the Liberal Party doesn't exist anymore in New South Wales in the traditional sense. People don't recognise the party of uh, John Howard or Nick Greiner from years gone by. Um, so uh, we'd have to sit down and negotiate with uh, the major parties. Will they adopt our energy policy? Which party would halt the so-called transition to a clean energy economy? Which party would get back to the evidence base and, and our policies in, in the classroom? getting rid of the political indoctrination, the left-wing material in particular. So it's not a rosy outlook because these major parties, it's like Tweedledee and Tweedledum, they're very, very similar. But if we had the balance of power in the lower house, that would be our position by way of negotiation. In the upper house, it's very important because the polls point to a Labor-Green government in the lower house. Well, they'd be on about drug legalisation, gender fluidity in the classroom and even faster rush to 100% renewables and blackouts. So you need uh, One Nation in the upper house as an insurance policy, a handbrake against the worst excesses of a Labor-Green government in the lower house. Yeah, I reckon there's a lot of people saying we need five more Mark Lathams in the upper house. What about the balance of power in the lower house? So do you think you've got a chance of getting some people elected in, uh, in some of these seats? Well, there's been some encouraging polling and the major parties uh, are certainly briefing the media that the One Nation vote is decisive in outer Western Sydney. I think we'll do very well, well in the Hunter Valley, where we're the only party standing up for, for coal, fighting for the 75,000 coal-reliant jobs in the Hunter Valley, a seat like Cessnock, a seat like Walls End. I think we can do very well. I think, Corey, because there's a long-term trend for the major party primary vote to go down, uh, and One Nation is the logical alternative. 
for people to turn to uh, if you're looking for mainstream common sense policy. It could be a very unpredictable uh, election night when the votes are counted on the 25th of this month. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating. Less than a couple of weeks to go. Good luck, Mark Latham, and thanks very much for joining me on Bernardi tonight.